we can equate the two sides and what do we get we get b a b n a rho omega a n b plus b b a n b rho omega so this is in a state of dynamic equilibrium this is where absorption and emission they match now let's keep let's rearrange this equation and make the density of states of photons this is simply the energy of photons per unit volume at the frequency omega you count the number of photons in the field that have the frequency omega multiply them with the energy of each photon h bar omega and divide by the volume so this is what this term means the energy density now you you've equated the two terms you can solve for rho omega <clears throat> all right so Okay. So this is the energy density of the photons, and A and B are some constants we have to determine. Now, in science, the general development of science takes place not by individuals, by a single individual, but by a long line of individuals. Science. can never take place in isolation that is an idea appears in one person's mind and he makes a whole paradigm or a whole theory out of it einstein did not do it planck did not do it maxwell did not do it faraday did not do it so each great mind in physics builds upon the work of his or her predecessors so einstein had available the whole work of max planck and we've learned in our physics classes that planck presented the energy density in his black body radiation theory so planck's expression for the energy density rho omega was h bar omega cube pi square c cube 1 over exponent h bar omega k b t minus 1 so this is planck's result and what does this mean this means that you have a cavity a box whose walls are at a temperature t now when the walls are at a temperature t they will emit radiation 
So there will be photons inside the cavity. So, and these photons carry a certain energy, which means there will be a spread of omegas. So this expression tells you the energy density at the frequency omega at a temperature capital T. So this is Planck's result and this is Einstein's result. So these are dynamical equations based upon absorption and emission and this is Planck's result. The two must match. Therefore the two can only match if we make this substitution that is BAB equals BBA the two B constants are the same but we have to take into account NA over NB so now we have two energy levels A and B this energy level has an energy EA this level has an energy EB so in A, the fraction of atoms in which the lower energy will be populated is proportional to exponent minus Ea over Kbt. This expression comes from Boltzmann and Nb is proportional to exponent minus Eb over Kbt. So if we put these expressions into Einstein's result, so this is Planck, and this is Einstein, A over B A B exponent, now N A over N B is Eb minus Ea which is h bar omega kbt minus b b a that was Planck's result this is Einstein's result so now Einstein is using formulas from Planck and Boltzmann now we can compare the two energy densities and now it will be clear that the two formulas will match if BAB equals BBA and both of them are equal to another constant to the same constant B. Let's denote both of them as B. And the second condition is that A over B has to equal H bar omega cube pi square C cube. So we have two kinds of constants, A and B. They are called the Einstein's coefficients. And this expression tells us that the coefficient associated with absorption is equal to the coefficient associated with stimulated emission. So absorption and stimulated emission take place with the same rates in a state of equilibrium. In a state of equilibrium. Remember these words. Only in a state of equilibrium will absorption and stimulated emission take place at the same rate. And we also have this additional expression. So B is a constant that we can find from, find from quantum mechanics. All of us, uh, my class knows that this can be found from, how can you find B? How do you find the coefficient B? Yes, you calculate the matrix element between the two transitions. So you calculate B and from the calculation of B you can estimate A. So this is the background. Now, with this background, after this background, we are in a position to discuss 
how do lasers really work? So it was necessary to build up this background. All right, so A equals H bar omega cube pi square C cube B. This is another way of writing the above expression. Okay? So what is A? Let's recap. A is a constant associated with spontaneous emission. B is a constant associated with stimulated emission. And it's also associated with absorption. The rate of stimulated emission is the same as the rate of absorption. And laser, as we all know, works on the principle of stimulated emission. So stimulated emission has to win over spontaneous emission. This is the basic principle. Stimulated emission has to win over spontaneous emission. Now from this formula you can notice that the rate of spontaneous emission is proportional to the cube of the frequency. Right? So if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum, different kinds of radiation occur at different wavelengths. There's a microwave, then there's the infrared, there's the visible regime, there's the ultraviolet, then come the X-rays, and so on. So higher the frequency, higher will be the rate of spontaneous emission. Therefore, it will be difficult to compete with spontaneous emission for higher frequencies. Agreed? Therefore, it will be difficult to make lasers for higher frequencies. X-ray lasers, therefore, are very difficult to make. And a lot of research nowadays is going on the, f on the effort to making X-ray lasers. But X-ray lasers are the most difficult to make. Visible are easy to make. Infrared are easy to make. And microwave lasers are the easiest to make. And they were, in fact, made in 1954. They were called masers. Okay, unko masers ka naam diya gaya tha. So now, with this background, let's see what's the underlying concept behind lasers. Alright, <clears throat> so let's write the rate of emission and divide it by the rate of absorption. So now I am going to motivate you to lasers can be used. The rate of emission is simply B. Now we don't have to write the sub subscripts B, B, A because the B's are the same. B and B rho omega plus A and B. This is the rate of emission. And the rate of absorption is given by B and A rho omega. All right. देखो ये जो हमने A और B derived किए थे, they were derived in a condition of equilibrium. They were derived when we invoked the condition of equilibrium. But A and B are really constants. They will remain the same whether the system is in equilibrium or it's out of equilibrium. We use the equilibrium condition to derive those constants. But now we're not assuming equilibrium. Okay? We're not assuming equilibrium. That if, if we had a state of equilibrium, this ratio would be 1. We would never achieve lasers. 